What's up, it's Marco back in on This Week in Soccer, and we got a lot to talk about this week. In fact, we're going to be talking about every single player that I'm covering. We got a lot of news, a lot of big transfers, a couple of good results for some players. I mean, you're starting out with the first thing. Josh Sargent secured a big move to Norwich City, and man, this is a huge move for Josh Sargent. I mean, this is a honestly a pretty good situation that he's being put into. I know that Norwich are a team in a relegation battle, but in terms of competition, he only has a Puki, who's a solid player, but nothing special. Ida, who's a youngster, Hugel, championship-level player. And there's going to be opportunities for him to start, especially with him being able to play on play on the wing. And there are a lot of good creative players behind him, too. Uh, Todd Cantwell, Rashika, his former teammate, and uh, Billy Gilmore in loan for Chelsea. There's going to be a lot of opportunities for success. It's just Josh Hart is going to need to score goals, and that is the one criticism that we really have for him. He's a great worker. He presses really well, which will fit well in that uh, Farke system. But he's going to need to score goals for Norwich if they want to stay up. And right now he's at the point where he could be turn out like Josie Altidore, go to a you know mediocre Premier League team and kind of flounder, or he could take that step up, become a great player, and secure that number nine shirt for years to come. And and I'm really rooting for Josh Sharsh, and I feel like this is a great move for him. And Norwich City, they're going to be fun to watch too. I mean, they are a team that just got promoted, but they play attacking and. You just know Norwich City historically. They're going to be losing 6-2 a lot of games, so it could be fun to watch. Uh, next news is uh, Chris Richards. According to uh, Bavarian Football Works, Leicester City are kind of interested in signing him. This is due to uh, Fontana's injury, and Johnny Evans is also hurt. Uh, Stu Horton is screaming in excitement somewhere. But, um, yeah, I feel like this would be a good move for him. Leicester, they play three at the back a lot, so good opportunities to play. Uh, would be playing along some good players. Uh, Fontana's hurt at the moment, but uh, and they've got some good center backs there. I think Wes Morgan just retired, so there are going to be opportunities. But uh, Hoffenheim are staying at Bayern. Still seem more likely at the moment, but uh, Leicester's getting thrown into the mix. Uh, next, this is a uh, Schrupsteyer star reports that uh, West Brom are interested in Daryl DK, and uh, yeah, it could be a good move. I mean, Championship, their team that looks like they could easily get promoted, so. I feel like that would be a good move, but uh, also he hasn't played since the Gold Cup, which I think confirms his injury, but I mean, would be a decent move for DK, but I don't feel like that's going to be happening anytime soon. Uh, definitely wait before the end of the season before you really start getting interested in transfers. Next, Owen Atosai. According to Tribal Football, well, Wolves are willing to sell him after he declined that contract, and Club Bruges has submitted a bid for him, uh, £4 million. Pounds. Yeah, Belgium would be a good place for him to develop. Because he's someone, he only started playing uh, soccer like a couple years ago. And man, he's already been starting in the Premier League. And he's someone who could be really promising. I feel like him getting playing time is definitely the most important thing. So moving on from Wolves, I feel like that's a good idea for him. Uh, next, uh, this is something probably not going to happen, but I want to talk about for a reason. Uh, Serginho Des, well, he still looked like he's going to be the starting right back for Barcelona. But according to uh, La Gazeta in uh, Italy... Barcelona could loan him. I assume this would be due to finances. It doesn't seem legit, but um, the plan would be to replace, uh, would be the backup plan for AC Milan if uh, their move for Flen Florenzi falls through, which, again, I don't feel like this is going to happen, but I wanted to report it. And lastly, the Gianluca Busio transfer to Venezia is finally official. Took so long, but finally happened. He's all back in Italy, and man, I'm really looking forward to seeing him play, man. Gonna have to watch Venezia this year, especially if they get uh, Eric Palmer Brown. He's still linked with Venezia, but no change to that. And uh, now these are just some updates on players who look like they're gonna leave, but uh, nothing really changed yet. Matt Miazga, still nothing. Like he's not even linked to a team at the moment. Like apparently, like according to SI, he's been transfer listed. He could leave Chelsea, but no team. Like, like I'm able to find links for most players. You can't find it for Miazga. And, like, he's been on loan at, like, three teams, excluding uh, Vietis, which uh, Chelsea's a uh, feeder team, or, I don't know, they're, they just send everybody there. And honestly, I'd take him getting loaned there for playing time, but, dude, <laughs> nothing on Matt Miazga. Uh, for Cameron Carter-Vickers, uh, still no update. Newcastle and Celtic seem like the teams who are interested, but um, he was on the bench for a friendly for Tottenham, but doesn't seem like, no updates on that yet. Matthew Hoppe, still nothing. Uh, the links to the Premier League continue. Um, Southampton did loan in a striker, so probably not him. But uh, still like Arsenal, Everton, Tottenham. They're the teams linked, but nothing at the moment. Then Reggie Cannon, he wasn't in the team for Bro Vista last week. 
So I'm assuming a move is coming, though um, nothing really confirmed. I mean, there was that one thing where he's linked to Nice by John Lucabusio and uh, just general Serie A links throughout the year, but nothing at the moment, but I feel like something will come this week. Uh, Tyler Boyd looks to be staying at Besiktas. Um, he was loaned out last year, but he seems to have impressed the manager in the preseason. Uh, Anthony Robinson, he started for Fulham this week. Uh, not the greatest performance, but first game of the year, so is what it is. Uh, no updates on his transfer, and the more nothing happens, the more likely it is he stays at Fulham. Obviously, uh, Man City, Wolves, Bordeaux, they've all been linked in the past, but not sure about that at the moment. And uh, Tim Ream, he was starting again for Fulham, so... Uh, something to remember. I mean, he's a championship level player, but just remember, it's a good thing that we don't want him in the team because he's a solid player. He's led Fulham to promotion two times already, so just keep that in mind. Okay, next, uh, just a quick injury updates. Uh, Bill Hamid, he's going to be out for five to six weeks, uh, which would take him out of World Cup qualifiers, though I don't think he'd be involved. Uh, Yanis Musa's injury will keep him out of World Cup qualifying. That's pretty disappointing. Uh, Aaron Long and Jordan Morris are both still out long term. No uh, timetable on their return. And uh, Richie Ledesma was seen walking without crutches. He's still not uh, going to be returning anytime soon, but that's definitely a good sign. I'm really looking forward to seeing Richie Ledesma again. Now on to guys who just finally got to guys who are playing. Just so playing time, stuff about where their position's going to be and how they actually did this week. And starting off, we had the best performance of the week. It's got to be Conrad De La Fuente in his debut for Marseille. Great performance by him. He was looking dangerous all game, making a ton of chances. Uh, created a goal that was ruled offside, and, and he looked great. He was named into uh, Ligue 1 uh, Team of the Week. Man, great performance by him, especially in a debut. Like, I feel like this is what we were expecting when we heard there was a, a USA prospect coming out of La Masia in Barcelona. And, man, he did not disappoint. Great performance by him, and honestly, he's going to be giving Greg Berhalter a lot to think about because that was a great performance. And if he continues to play well out wide, and that's a really good option. Giorena can come inside, especially with Yunus Musa being injured. Man, that's something that could definitely be an option. And I mean, Giorena, he started in the central midfield as he held Dortmund to an easy DFB Focal win. So yeah, with Conrad really progressing as that winger, Giorena could be playing centrally for the USA team. and That would be huge for us. That's something I really want to see. Also, another thing that could be huge for the USA team, a new addition to this team, this list, Joe Scaly. He started for Borussia Mönchengladbach on the left in a win in the DFB Pokal. He's a right back by trade, but I mean, hey, if he's versatile enough to play left back, that is good because left back's not something we have uh, sealed up in the... It's a pretty open position in the U.S. Men's National Team. And yeah, great prospect. I mean, I kind of forgot how young Joe Scaly was. He's like, he would be graduating high school this year. Like, I mean, he's a huge prospect for us. Like, if he continues to play well at right back and... And that could open Dest up on the left. If he does well on the left, that's a lot of options. Like, man, Joe Scaly, really looking forward to seeing him. Uh, then Tyler Adams starting the midfield, not outright, like he was doing a bit for RB Leipzig last year. He started in the midfield for Jesse Mark in his first game. Uh, Julian Green started and scored a penalty. Uh, started, he scored and converted a penalty, but Greuterfirth still crashed out of the DFP Pokal. Pretty disappointing, but, I mean... They probably want to be focused on the league this year. They're going to be in a relegation battle. But it's good to see Julian Green still starting for them. He looks like he's going to be a Bundesliga regular. And that could easily help him into the US Men's National Team for World Cup qualifying. Uh, John Brooks, he's still starting for Wolfsburg. And I don't talk about John Brooks much because, like, well, he's a center back, so he's not going to be scoring goals. And he's already a starter. So, like, like it's big news if Joe Scaly's starting. It's probably big news if Christian Pulisic starts. But, like, with John Brooks, like, He's just so solid that it's he doesn't even make the news, like, ever. So that's really good for him. And, uh, you know, just for things like that, like, I'm not going to be reporting if John Brooks just has a decent game. Like, if he has a man of the match performance, like, that'll be something. But, like, probably not going to be talking about John Brooks if that it just continues to be solid. Not going to mention Cameron Carter-Vickers next week if it's still just Newcastle and Celtic. So just wanted to mention that. I'm talking about everybody this week because I basically could, but, yeah. Ethan Horvath, he was on the bench for Forrest in their season opener, but their incumbent goalkeeper, Samba, had a pretty poor performance, and uh, Ethan Horvath should get a chance in their uh, EFL Cup game on Wednesday. They're playing against Bradford, so that's definitely a game where you rotate players, and if he has a good performance, then and he could easily break into that Nottingham Forest team. I think they signed him with the attempt to start him, so hopefully Ethan Horvath has a good performance, and, and Bradford, they can be tough in the Cup. Remember that 2013 run? 
got all the way to the League Cup final. Okay, next, uh, Weston McKinney. He didn't start for Juventus since last friendly, but I still expect him to see a lot of playing time. He might not be, like, their starter starter, but, like, they're going to be rotating so much due to Champions League and, like, midweek games in general. So I'm expecting Weston McKinney to play a lot. Uh, Christian Pulisic, he was on the Crack Podcast this week. Got to check that out. It's on YouTube. And uh, he said he's not in the great position at Chelsea right now. I mean, it seems like he is going to be playing wing back a lot more for them, which, man, that's you don't really like to see that. I mean, he's definitely way more dangerous attacking. But if it gets him in the Chelsea team, gets him playing, then, hey, that's good for him, I guess. Uh, next, uh, Lupe de la Torre start, uh, he scored for Heracles in a friendly. I mean, he better have a good performance this year because he missed the Gold Cup, which was a huge chance for his stock to grow, basically because he wanted to get a full free season in. And, and I'm not too sure about that decision. I feel like him playing in Gold Cup would have been, like, really big for him. I feel like he'd be, like, really in our national team conversation at the moment. But he decided to skip it, and and he better do well this year. Next, uh, DeAndre Yedlin didn't play as Galatasaray drew in their Europa League qualifiers. I mean, hopefully he gets some more game time. I could honestly see him moving back to the MLS pretty soon, though. Uh, Brian Reynolds. This is related to the Sergio Dest news, which was uh, Flore- Florenzini, sorry, Florenzi moving to AC Milan. And, I mean, that looks like Brian Reynolds won the backup right-back spot. He didn't get to play in a friendly recently because, uh, geez, if you saw that Roma game, like, I think three red cards for the team and Jose got sent off too. So, yeah. But with the Europa Conference League, I really expect Brian Reynolds to get some game time this year. Next, uh, Mark McKenzie. After being dropped in the Champions League, he was he started again in the Belgians League for Gank, but then he was subbed off, and uh, now he's not starting today in the Champions League. So it seems like something's up with uh, Mark McKenzie there. Cause, like, by everything I can find, he's playing good games. I haven't been able to see, like, a full Gank game yet, but he seems to be playing well, but his playing time's going down, and maybe that's just uh, their starters returning, but I mean, you got to feel for Mark McKenzie, because uh, he's in Belgium to get playing time, so really want to do better. Uh, next, Zach Steffen started for Man City as they lost the Community Shield, but he had a very good performance, a couple of really nice saves, and he, they only scored with a penalty. And he actually has a good stance, chance to start in the Premier League this week, because uh, Ederson only just returned, so you could easily see Zach Steffen playing this week. Next, uh, Jordan Sibichu starting the Champions League in qualifiers and a draw. He's starting again today. Hopefully he has a good performance. Tim Weah, back to coming off the bench for Leo, but I feel like that's good for his development. Just keep playing, keep getting time. He'll get better. And he's such a great athlete, got a lot of good qualities in him. We're looking forward to seeing him play. Uh, Nicola Giacchini, uh, back in the Cone team. Well, not back in the Cone team yet. He might be this week, but he just returned from the Gold Cup, so can't expect him to be back too soon. And Brandon Aronson, he scored a great goal past Matt Turner in his first start. That was his little brother. Jeez. Paxton Aronson had a, not going to be covering him yet, but great goal by Brandon Aronson's little brother. And uh, Brandon Aronson continuing to play well. He scored in a friendly against Barcelona, and he's continuing to start in the Bundesliga, in the Austrian Bundesliga, so great job by him. Now over to the MLS, George Bello, he had a really nice assist in the Atlanta win. He's been playing well. Hopefully he can just continue to get playing time, continue to develop. Uh, Caden Clark, not much on him this week, but I was looking at uh, Red Bull, and he's been playing in a lot of different positions for him, playing deep, playing further forward, even been out wide for a little bit. But, uh, well, they're not really playing with wingers at the moment. But uh, good to see the versatility out of Caden Clark. Uh, Justin Che, his playing time's decreased a bit for FC Dallas. He's still expected to move on, but, um, yeah, something to uh, take note of. I think it's just their right backs are coming back. He was being played out of position anyway. Sebastian Glett, back in the LA Galaxy team. And, uh... Lastly, we've got four players who I'm covering named to the MLS All-Star team. Matt Turner, Miles Robinson, Kate Coel, and Ricardo Pepe. Great to see all of them. All really good prospects you really hope to see in the national team. Yeah, that's all I've talked about this week. Really good week. I'm really excited about uh, Josh Charger's move to Norwich and going to be watching Conrad a lot because he looks really good. And, and if Conrad develops, that is like so huge for the national team. Gio Reyna playing in the center, like... If our midfield is Tyler Adams and West McKinney G Arena, dude, that is going to be amazing to watch. I'm really hoping for him to continue to develop. And yeah, that's all I'll talk about this week. Awesome week this week. Yeah, see ya.